Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly Golaley. This is Perfumed Vegas. The show where I have no idea what I'm doing and I just take you along for the ride. Yeah, so anyway. Welcome back. I am doing, I don't think it's a tag, but I've definitely seen several channels doing it. Um, and I think it's always really interesting to see what people choose. What I'm talking about is the 10 fragrances for life. Um, now everyone, I hope, who is a subscriber to my channel by now knows that if I could only choose one fragrance for life, it would be Terry McGuire Angel. Um, but I can also pick 10 fragrances that I would definitely have in my life forever if it came down to only having 10. Um, I didn't break it up into categories like designer, niche, luxury, indie, etc. because I just don't have that many. Uh, I could probably pick 10 indie fragrances for life, but I think that's the only group that I have enough that I could choose 10 for life out of just a single category. So if you want to see that video, give me a thumbs up. Um, or if you want to see more indie perfumed videos in general, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, let's get started. Let's start with the obvious perfumes for life. Number one, it's got to be Angel. Um, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know if they refill these anymore. I haven't seen a refill station here in a while. Um, but it could be that I'm just not going to the places where they are. I might have to go online and find out. Because if they can refill these still, I'll probably start using it a lot more. Um, it's just, it's my favorite. I mean, if you don't know how Angel smells, just, it's sweet, it's fruity, it's not extremely floral, but it's a little floral. It's tart. It's gourmand, it's oriental, it's vanilla, it's chocolate, it's caramel. Um, it's just, it's delicious. It is literally delicious. Um, and I've been wearing it for years and years and years now and never had any complaints. So <laughs> um, my my number one pick is Angel Mugler, the original, shooting like the original Eau de Parfum. The second choice, if we're talking about Angel, we're talking about Mugler, the second choice, of course, would be Alien, Mugler's Alien. Um, this one took a while for me to grow. It took a while to grow on me. Um, when it first was launched, I was like, yes. Um, and then I smelled it at Nordstrom's and I was like, oh, wow, no, that's not for me. At the time that it was not my jam, it was not my vibe. I got Womanity <laughs> and I had been wearing Womanity for maybe a couple of years before I smelled Alien again. And I was like, ooh, actually, you know what? I really like that. The, the problem with Alien is that the very heady jasmine at the top tends to smell syrupy and a little synthetic and a lot of people paired with like the black currant notes and some of the fruitier notes in this they get a grape cough syrup vibe and that's what I got from it for a long time now however I have learned to appreciate alien I think I wear alien more than angel again this is the refill bottle I think I've refilled it twice this is the third refill and this is the fourth refill of these so these ones are probably my most worn just in general of all my fragrances. The third one that is a pretty like obvious, I've talked about it a lot on my channel, hello, um, is Dior um, Addict, Christian Dior, Dior Addict. This is a bottle from 2011, right before they reformulated it again. Um, it has the little twist top. It's just so cute, but the scent is so, so, so good. It's my ultimate sexy night out perfume. This is what you wear if you want to get you a man, like ultimate sexy night out. I'm not going to spray it because I don't want to waste it. I have about half of the bottle left, so about 10 mil left, um, and I... 
Although I know that the reformulation is supposed to smell pretty good, pretty close. Um, it's still hard to think that I looked so long to find that scent to uh, be a dupe for the original um, Sin perfume oil by Urban Decay. And then they reformulated that. So is it going to be the same? I've not tried it, but I will eventually when I run out. So let's do um the indie, the one of the indies that I picked. Um, another one I talk about on my channel all the time should not come as a surprise. It is Solstice Scents Old Havana. This is the Burnishing Glacé. I have the perfume oil as well. I need to get the EDP for show, for show, for show, because this is so good. I'm going to spray this on me because it's an oil, but this is so so good. So, so, so. It's tobacco y, but it's not too sweet. It's a little bit rum, a little boozy. It's got a little bit of the seashore vibe to it. It really does transport you, like I've said before, to another time and place. It's a beautiful fragrance. I think Solstice Scents really outdid themselves with this one. Um, so yeah, it's a really, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's permanent as long as, you know, they can continue to source the ingredients. So unlike some of these, which may be discontinued or reformulated, um, Old Havana is not. For the most affordable fragrance, qu comparatively, quantitatively, the most affordable fragrance is H&M Moxar Patchouli. I have done a video now, I'll link it, all about these H&M fragrances. I've done a video about my love for patchouli. This is an amazing patchouli scent that for the price, this is a perfume, uh, 30 ml, I'm sorry, 50 ml perfume, eau de parfum, um, for the price of $29.99, this is like an unbeatable quality fragrance. The patchouli is so earthy, but it's not dirty. It's not like too skanky. Um, <laughs> it's just earthy and warm and slightly sweet. It's done with a lot of violet. It's a really gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Um, I don't know if this is permanent I doubt it is because it seems like H&M does kind of refresh, refresh their fragrance collections every so often, but H&M Moxar Patchouli, I will definitely be getting my hands on backups of this if I see it going on sale. Now for the most expensive, <laughs> the qu quantitatively the most expensive is Christian Dior Grand Ball. Grand Ball. The signature, Christian Dior signature, I think is what's called. Um, there are other jasmine fragrances in the Christian Dior signature scent, but this one is super warm. It's um, very floral on the top, but it's not a fresh floral. It's not a sweet floral. It's not indolic or um, heady. It's just very, very rich and warm and just, it keeps the uh, essence of um, almost romantic, like, comfort, if that's, it, I'm really bad at painting these mental pictures. Um, and I don't, I have not had this fragrance for very long, but it's really become one of my favorites. It's probably my favorite jasmine scent that I own, um, even more so than Alien, because Alien is a little bit rich, it's a little heady, but this is just so much warmer and it's just a very um, comfortable scent. It's deep, but it's not like overwhelming. It's not going to be like too powerful um, and it's not too fresh either, which I really like. I'm not a freshy type of person. So that was Grand Ball Christian Dior. All right, four left. I'm trying to not take forever like I usually do. Let's talk about another one that I've mentioned quite a few times on my channel. This one, again, shouldn't be too surprising. It is Mont Blanc Presence d'une Femme by Mont Blanc. Womp womp. It is Presence du Femme by Mont Blanc. And if you wonder why I'm doing this, it's because it's mirrored and so it will blind you. This is my second bottle. I love this fragrance. It's 
It's so inexpensive, but this fragrance is my number one pick for any situation. No matter what you are looking to do, no matter what situation you're going into, whether it's work, home, shopping, the beach, the pool, vacation, corporate office, it does not matter. This is going to work for that. It's such a diverse, it's a unique fragrance. It has a DNA like I have never smelled on any other perfume. And I have smelled a lot of perfume. So this has been around for ages. This has been around for decades. And I've never smelled a DNA like this. It's beautiful. If you have not gotten a chance to try Mont Blanc Presence Dune Femme, I'll try to put that up there so that you can see since my French pronunciation is very bad. If you can try this, try it. It's very affordable. It's under $30 on FragranceNet or any of the websites. Even if you buy it from a retailer, it's only like $75. You can get a deal on this fragrance and it is worth it, 100%. Okay, so now into indies again, Indian niche, and then I have a masculine fragrance, a men's fragrance. So this is one that is has been discontinued. It's been discontinued for a long time. And I've put it in this list as kind of a, a, a what if, like wishful scenario. If this could be in production and could be in my life forever, that's what I wish it would be. And it is Lacum by Alchemic Muse. <sighs> I never wear this anymore. But... It is the most amazing Turkish Delight fragrance. Oh, it's citrusy, it's lemony, it's sweet. It's that really sweet sugar lemon that dries down to rose and musk and just, it's so amazing. This fragrance is how I wish Turkish Delight really tasted. And I don't hate Turkish Delight. I do like it, sort of. Uh, but if it tasted like this smells, I would never stop eating it. This, again, is called Locum. It's by Alchemic Muse. I'll link everything down below. This is out of production. This has been discontinued for quite some time now, like many, many years now. Um, she stopped production because she wasn't able to source an ingredient for it anymore. Um, I don't know what that ingredient was. Uh, I don't know if it's something that could ever be brought back in the future. I honestly don't even think there's much of a demand for it to be brought back in the future. But if I could, if I had a genie, like if I had a genie, one of my wishes would be like a never ending supply of Locum by Alchemy use. It's perfect for summer. It's great for spring too. It's just all around. It's a vacation for vacations. Oh my god. I'm gonna stop there. Okay. My last pick, I only have a, I think this is a five mil, a five mil. Yeah. This is House of Matriarch Forbidden. I have a lot of fragrances from House of Matriarch that I love. House of Matriarch has so many fragrances I love, and Forbidden is not even my favorite from the house in regards to the fragrance. It is one of my favorites for sure, but it's not my top, top favorite. I love Antimony. I love Orca. I love um, Daylily that was just out on a deal. Oh, God. Anyway, I'm getting on a tangent. I love a lot of fragrances from the house, um, but Forbidden is the one, Forbidden Bonsai is honestly was kind of a tie between those two, but I went with Forbidden because I think it's a little bit more sexy. Um, although Bonsai is a little more different from my other choices. Eh, it's kind of a toss up. I have Forbidden here though, so we're going to go with that. Um, forbidden is the one that I find myself reaching for the most. The what I It's what I reach for in all situations. Um, it's... It's not like bonsai where it's like super fresh or green. It's definitely a dark, it's definitely seductive. It's definitely got a kind of um, sultry, dirty quality to it. It has that absinthe note, that um, that deep, rich sort of decadence to it that makes this like very much a night out type of fragrance 
but yet oh, it's pointing the wrong way there we go oh my gosh it's so it's it's on the skin it doesn't feel that way on the skin it doesn't feel overwhelming. It doesn't feel like it's overpowering. It doesn't feel dark. This, going back to Angel, Ali, or Angel, going back to Alien, this feels dark on the skin. Going back to Dior, this feels dark on the skin. Forbidden doesn't feel dark on the skin. It feels rich. It feels um, delicious. It does, it does have kind of a delicious gourmand feeling about it. Although I don't think they classify it as gourmand. Maybe they do. I'll write it on the screen. It's just, it's so good. And it's like almost the name forbidden belies how easy it is to wear. And I love that. And so even though, like I said, it's not my favorite favorite from House of Matriarch, it is the one I, that I find myself reaching for most often. So, oh wait, one more. Oh my God. I almost left you without the last one. The last and most important is my pick for a man's fragrance, Givenchy Pohomme, the original Red Lem Red Bottle one. Um, this is amazing, you guys. If any guy, if any guy came up to me wearing this fragrance, it would be like panty dropping. I mean, holy crap. This is so good. It's woody. It's a little bit fresh, a little bit spicy, but it's not too much. It's mainly woods. You mainly get just a really creamy, masculine woodiness that is so freaking sexy. It's sexy on a man, but it is sexy on a woman too. I wear this sometimes when I want to feel like a sexy, sensual being. It's God, it makes me so mad that these fragrances, like the best ones, get discontinued. Givenchy Paul Home, the um, original red bottle, that is my number 10. That wraps it up. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have done this video, let me know down below so I can go check out your picks. If you are interested in the video, let me know if you film it so I can go check out your picks. If you don't want to film it, but you just want to tell me your 10 forever picks, then do so in the comments. I'd love to hear it. This sort of freaking fascinates me because it's like human psychology in 10 perfume bottles. Like, what does this say about you? What does this say about me? Why did I choose these? Will they always be in my list? Probably not. Angel's the only one that I can guarantee will still be there if I ever do this video again. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and until I see you again on the next one, 